In this video, we're going to look at the difference between static versus kinetic friction. Here we have a graph, and this graph has applied force and friction on it. So imagine you have this eraser here, and I am pushing on it. So as I push on it, initially it's not moving. If I push it hard enough, then it starts to move. So when I am pushing on it and it's not moving, we call this static friction. So this is called static friction. Okay. And then once it starts to move, once I'm pushing it and it is moving, we call this kinetic friction. So what you notice is that the static friction will increase as the applied force is increased. So the more applied force you have, the more static friction. So here's another example. Here I have a weight and I have a uh, spring here. I can push on it. Notice that I'm pushing on it. Okay, so this has a spring here and I am pushing on it, but yet it's not moving. And so right now the static friction is equal to the force that I'm pushing it with. If I push harder, there's more static friction until I overcome the static friction, and then now it starts to move. Once it starts to move, refer to that as kinetic friction. So now we have kinetic friction. And notice that kinetic friction is constant. And even though if I exert a greater amount of applied force, the kinetic friction is still the same amount. Uh, now, for, for to calculate friction, um, we need to know something called the coefficient of friction. Then we have a coefficient of friction for static friction and also coefficient of friction for kinetic friction. And this just tells us how uh, sticky the two surfaces are. So are you using wood on wood or ice on ice? And we have charts that we can look up to find the, um, the coefficient of friction. So this one has coefficient of kinetic friction. And you can see that wood on wood is 0.2. Uh, but on ice on ice, because it's a lot more smooth, it's more slippery, uh, the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.03. So we also have these charts for static friction as well. And you'll notice that the maximum static friction coefficient of, st uh, the maximum static friction up here is greater than kinetic friction. Um, the idea is this, that to get this moving initially, it takes a bit of force, but once it starts moving, um, you do not need as much force uh, to keep it to keep it going. Okay, so um, now we're going to take a look at our force um, a force diagram here. So here we have um, a hundred newton uh, weight block, and towards the right is our applied force. I'm going to call that F A. Uh, we also have F G going down. We have F N going up. And to the left, right now, if it's not moving, in this case it's not moving, we're going to call this static friction. So I'm going to call that Fs, okay? So in this situation, the velocity is zero. It is not, not moving. It's at rest, okay? If you push it with enough force, and now I have a greater force, we have Fg, Fn, or this is going to be Fk because it is moving. So now it is moving. Um, and once it starts moving, the kinetic friction is going to be constant. And we can calculate that. We'll calculate that in just a moment. Okay. So in this situation here, just make a note that in this one, we are, it is moving. Moving. Okay. So this one is moving. This one is at rest. All right. So let's calculate uh, what the kinetic friction is here. So to calculate the kinetic friction, Fk is equal to mu Kfn. What this tells us is that kinetic friction depends on two things. It depends on the coefficient of friction, mu K. Okay, coefficient of friction tells us how sticky the two uh, surfaces are, how rough the surfaces are, okay, and how they interact with each other. Okay, so this has to do with this, the type of surface. And Fn is the normal force. Um, how how hard the two surfaces are pressed against each other, okay? So if you take your hand, you can slide them pretty easily. If you, like, really push them against each other, and now you try to slide them, it gets really, really hard to slide them, right? So uh, Fn is how hard the two surfaces are pushed against each other. So let's say that we're working with two surfaces where their static coefficient of static friction is 0 0.5, and coefficient of kinetic friction 
is 0 0.3, okay? And typically, the coefficient of kinetic friction is going to be lower than the coefficient of static friction. So now I'm going to substitute. Uh, I have 0.3 times Fn is equal to Fg because they're not accelerating vertically, and Fg is 100 newtons. That's just the weight. So this is 100 newtons, and we get 30 newtons. So the kinetic friction is going to be a constant 30 newtons, no matter how much force I exert on the block. Okay. So now let's take a look at the static friction. And the equation for the static friction is going to be a little bit different. Notice that the static friction changes depending on the applied force. But there is a maximum. Notice at this point we reached this maximum. So what we're going to calculate is that maximum. So I'm going to call it Fs max. And the maximum is going to be mu k, mu k, oh, sorry, mu k, mu s, because the static friction, so let me change that. It's going to be mu s, mu, mu s, and static friction times the um, coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Okay, so now I'm going to substitute uh, 0.5 times the normal force, the weight of the object is 100. Now be careful, the normal force is not always equal to the weight. If it's on an incline, it's not going to equal, it's going to be equal to a component of the weight. So just be real careful of that. In this case, they are going to be um, uh, equal to each other. And we get 50 newtons. So is the static friction always 50 newtons? The answer is no. It's not always going to be. The maximum, the maximum will be, 50 newtons, but in between, it could be between if your applied force is uh, smaller than that, then your static friction will be will be less than that. So let's create a chart to organize kind of this information to kind of help us understand what's going on here. On the left hand side is going to be my applied force. On the right hand side is going to be my friction. Okay, and I'm going to use uh, F for just a general symbol for friction. It could be static. It could be kinetic. So let's say that you were to push this object right here, right? This object with 30 newtons of force, 30 newtons. Okay. Is it going to move? No, it's not going to move because it needs to have at least 50 newtons of force. So it is the friction force will also be 30 because it's going to be balanced, right? It's going to be balanced. It's not moving. And so the forces that the applied and the static needs to be equal to each other. Let's say we push it with 40 newtons. Is it going to move? It's still not going to move because we need to get at least, we need to get above 50. So uh, the friction will also be 40 because the forces have to be balanced. It's not moving. We're going to go to 50. Is it going to move? It's not going to move. And the frictional force will be at its maximum, 50 newtons. Now, what happens after you push beyond uh, 50 newtons? So let's say you push to 60. So now you're at 60 newtons, okay? The frictional force will actually drop down to 30 newtons. Okay? So you may have noticed that we we're pushing something real heavy and once it gets going, it seems easier. And that's because the coefficient of static friction is typically lower, sorry, it's the coefficient of kinetic friction is typically lower uh, than the coefficient of static friction. What if you were to push it even more force? So 70 newtons, the frictional force will still be 30 newtons. So notice that that is constant. So here is when we have the object is moving, and when it's, once it's moving, the kinetic friction, kinetic friction, right? Remember that that is constant. That is constant. Okay, doesn't matter how fast it's moving, doesn't matter how much force you're exerting, as long as you're above the maximum static friction, the kinetic friction will be constant. Now, the static friction is a different story. So the static friction is going to equal the applied, the applied force. So if you have a greater applied force, the static uh, friction will be, uh, will be greater, okay, up till you get above that maximum static friction force. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of coefficient of static friction
and the coefficient of kinetic friction. And you'll notice that the coefficient of static friction is typically higher than the coefficient of kinetic friction. So we, when you calculate the maximum static friction force, it's going to be greater than kinetic friction. Now, if you have a small applied force and the object is not moving, then your static friction is going to be a small number, um, could be smaller than the kinetic friction. Uh, but, but if you were to use this to calculate your maximum static friction, uh, you're going to typically get a bigger number than uh, your kinetic friction. And this kind of makes sense because sometimes you're, you're pushing a really heavy object and it's really hard to get it to start moving. But once it starts moving, it seems like not as hard to, to keep it going. Um, and this is the reason.